All right, Matthew, we've got lesson 11.1.2, volume of similar psalms, <laughs> similar solids. It's early in the morning. All right, here we go. So uh, let's think of this. This is called a net. Basically, this is like a three-dimensional object that's been kind of like cut open and laid out. It's, think of it like as a cardboard box where like this is the bottom of the box. This is one of the sides if you fold it up. This is another side, and this would be like the top of the box. You know, you, you gotta imagine that you're kind of rolling it up to the top. So, what are the shape and the dimensions? Well, if this comes up, this comes up, this comes up, this comes up, and then this is the top, that would be a rectangular prism. The bottom's a rectangle, it's a prism because all the sides would be parallel, and then it had another uh, base on the top of it. So, that shape is a rectangular prism. called a rectangular prism because the base of the prism is a rectangle. The dimensions of the solid, so we've got the base is 3 by 4, and then the height, you can see here these are all the heights, the height would be 2. All right, so the dimensions of the sol solid for each scale factor. So a scale factor of 1 means that it's the same exact solid. So that'd be three by four by two. If the linear scale factor were two, everything would double. So this would be a six by eight by four. If the scale factor were three, everything would triple. So three times three is nine. Four times three is 12. Two times three is six. It'd be a nine by 12 by six. And finally, if we had a, a scale factor of 4, we would have 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so that's if we made a similar solid with these different scale factors. All right, so looking at what we have here, uh, let's look at the original volume. The original volume of the shape was 3 times 4 times 2 because the base area was 3 times 4. Remember, volume is the base area times the height. The base was 3 times 4, <coughs> which is 12. The height is 2. So the original has a volume of 24. And with a linear scale factor of 1, the new volume is going to be exactly the same thing. So if I did the ratio of the volumes, 24 to 24, that's 1. Okay, that was pretty obvious. All right, now let's look at 2. So when we do 2, we've got 6 times 8, that's 48, times a height of 4. So 48 times 4, 96 times 2, 100 and... 92, uh, let me see, 48 times 4, yeah, 192, I was right. So you get 192, the original is 24, it's always going to be 24, and now I've got 192. All right, so let's take 192 and divide by the original of 24 and see what the ratio of the volumes is. So 192 divided by 24, it's 8. So when we doubled the linear scale factor, the ratio of the volumes went up by a factor of 8. Let's see what happens with the linear scale factor of 3. So 9 times 12 is 108. That's the base area. Times 6. So 108 times 6 ends up 648. Okay, let's compare the volumes. So we've got 648 over 24. So I'm going to divide by 24, and we get 27. So when the linear scale factor is 3, the ratio of the volumes ends up being 27. 
You see the pattern yet? Let's see. Let's keep going one more time. 12 times 16 is 192 times the height of 8. Uh, I need a calculator for this one. 1536. All right, so now I'm going to look for the ratio of the volumes. So if I divide by 24, I get 64. So when the linear scale factor, <clears throat> that's the ratio of the lengths of the sides, is 4, we see that the ratio of the volumes is 64. So you see what's happening here? 1, 1, 2, 8, 3, 27, 4, 64. What we're seeing here is that the ratio of the volumes is the cube, or the third power, of the ratio of the sides. So if we've got a ratio, uh, linear scale factor of R, the original volume we'll just call V, the new volume ends up being uh, whatever r is to the third power times v. And so the ratio of this, the linear scale factor is r to the third. So how does changing the lengths of the sides affect the ratio of the volumes? The volumes... Ratio is the cube, or third power, of the linear scale factor. All right. So here I've got a solid over here. It looks like it's a 1 by 1 by 1, 2, 3. So I'm starting off with a 1 by 1 by 3. So if it's enlarged by a linear scale factor of 2, it would end up being a 2 by 2 by 3. Those are the new dimensions to it. How many of the 1 by 1 by 3 solids would we need to build the new solid? Well, how many new ones? We would need the original one that we had before. And then we'd have to go over here. So we'd have to build it there. And then we need to build it down here. And then we need another one down here. So we can see here that if we double it, we need one, two, three, four of the original sized objects that we started with. So we would need... Oh, wait, I only doubled those ones. I didn't double the length. Oh, I'd have to also double back here. I missed that. We'd need eight of them. Because we'd also, I only doubled the front part. We'd also need to double the back part, too. That's a really bad drawing. But, so I've doubled the, the base but I also have to double the length. Ooh, almost forgot to do that. So it's not four of them, it's eight of them. One, two, three, four here, and then four more in the back. So I would need eight of those. And that makes sense because we said when we had a linear scale factor of two, linear scale factor of two, the ratio of the volumes is eight. Hey, there we go. So what if the solid is enlarged by a linear scale factor of 3? Well, if we're enlarging it by a linear scale factor of 3, the new solid would need 3 to the third, 27 
of them to have the uh, this ratio of the volumes would end up being 27. At the movies, Maurice counts the number of kernels of popcorn in a small tub and finds 320 kernels. So that's kind of like the volume of his uh, popcorn. The medium tub is similar, but has a height 1.5 times larger. All right, so how many kernels would be in the medium tub? All right, so we know right now that the original tub has 320 kernels. The medium has X number of kernels. We don't know how many it has. Right now it's in a ratio of 1.5, or we could also state that as three over two. Now that is the height, so that's like the linear scale factor of these. So if I wanted to compare the volumes, so this is the length. If I wanted to compare the volumes, we would need to cube three halves or 1.5. So if I take three to the, uh, to the third power, I get 27. If I take two to the third power, I get eight. So the ratio of the volumes should be 27 over eight. Okay, so the original we would put on the bottom because that's the smaller one, right? The medium one's bigger. So we could write a proportion. So here's the kernels, which kind of represents the volume of the original one. And then the medium we want to find out is X. So that's the proportion comparing the original to the, uh, what's it called? to the medium one. You could also do this as 1.5 to the third power and 1.5 to the third power ends up being 3.375. So you could do 3.375 over one and still get the same answer. So I just did as a fraction because I like fractions. So anyways, we would do cross products. We get eight X equals 27 times 320, 8640, divide by 8, and we get 1,080 kernels of popcorn in the medium one. So the medium is 1.5 times the length, so that means the volume doesn't go up by 1.5, it looks like it goes by 3.375 instead. All right, so the volume is the cube of the linear scale factor. That's what we need to remember for this unit. All right, that's all I got. Math hard. See you later. Bye-bye.